Hello, everybody. Welcome to Mentor Time's topic of the week. This week, we're going to be talking about how to read a job posting and why it's important. Nowadays, people are reading job postings when they're ready to change a job. And there's a lot that changes about them. So senior people who may not have applied for a job in a while, often, um, even mid-level people, often don't realize how much job postings change. And uh, it's important, as I've discovered with working with people in the last few years, to make sure you keep up on this. The first thing you're going to see when you open job, uh, job postings will be something like these three. I've taken two, the one on the left and the middle are ones that mentees have sent me recently. And the one on the right comes from Idealist, uh, some job searching I did for a program manager job. It came up as a local job uh, and MOCO, M-O-C-O means Montgomery County. And you'll see the URLs up there. The first thing you see and you should see is the position title. It's a high level view of the position and who it reports to. And you can see that in the yellow highlight. Uh, going forward, I'll, you'll see yellow highlight and you'll also see a red box around something that's interesting. In this case, on the far right, they actually say really early on in the job description, the position is going to be uh, virtual. And that's helpful to know, obviously. So you want to know who it's reporting to. You want to know also as much as you can where it sits in the organization, if it's a large organization and the title doesn't necessarily tell you either the title after um, uh, a position uh, um, title, for example, Associate Vice President of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion doesn't say what um, part of the company it's sitting to, does it report to the president, does it report to the executive suite, et cetera, et cetera. As we go down, then you start to get to duties, responsibilities, qualifications. The thing to understand is there's no consistent sections and everybody, when they write them, writes them differently. The most consistent practice I've seen which is one that I also caution you against when we talk about how to write your descriptions of the work you've been doing in your CV and resume is they all include laundry lists, long lists of bullets. The one on the left has more than, um, on the right, sorry, has more than 25. The one on the left, I think has 13 or 14. And in the middle, there's seven on responsibilities and more under quals. They mix quals, they mix knowledge and skills and responsibilities. There's no consistent way. Your job is to try to read through these, figure out what the big themes are. I often tell people two to three task areas usually comprise 75% of the job you're doing at present or the job you will be moving into. Find those big task area buckets so that you can group similar things under that. And this will help you when you go to tailor your resume and write your cover letter, when you can talk about, when you can write about a higher level and meeting several different um, responsibilities, duties, or uh, desired um, uh, skills and experience. Look at the way they phrase things. In this case, there are two yellow highlights. Both of those are other duties as required. And almost every job description says, we want you to do everything wonderful and small and anything else we can think of as it comes along. The red box in the middle one is interesting, good sense of humor. I don't know how you demonstrate that. Certainly if you go up a uh, to the fourth one from the bottom in that same, it says ability to communicate effectively with a diverse audience. You can write and talk about the way in which you've done that either in presentations, writing for specific audiences, re outreach campaigns like that. But it's hard to say I have a good sense of humor. My husband's sense of humor and mine are totally opposite. So I don't know what you would say to this but it can demonstrate culture. And so reading a job posting also helps you understand job culture, the culture of the organization. So this might tell you that it's full of young people who wanna have fun, 
or uh, works well under pressure or committed or fast paced could mean long hours, young and um, energetic and um, and, uh, you know, multitasker might say young again. It's not certain that these things relate, but just watch for uh, things that are unusual job uh, requirements. In the um, bottom left, it's interesting that there's already something about travel and so understanding that this job does have other places that you'd be going to may be a plus for you or may not be, but just be aware of it. Um, now, as we go down farther, suddenly we see on the far right, they're still carrying on the 30 plus bullets that they have. And here you see they say energetic, positive individual with a commitment to youth development, highly respectable environment. Hard to tell if they're trying to recruit a young person to work or a youngish person to work in a um, in uh, in a youth development program, but more they're just wanting to make sure you're known as someone who is probably more outgoing um, and can relate to a younger audience and maybe a variety of audiences. You won't get a lot of information from reading this. It's just a tip off. For example, that might be a tip off if you say work independently, energetic, uh, self-starter, might be a tip off, you won't get much training or guidance. These all give you indications to culture clues and how your work's gonna go with these organizations. Now we get down finally towards application and we see on the left, they finally give you some information about generally about how their organization works. And to apply, it pushes you right into an applicant tracking system. This slide is one that Wabanzi gave me um, approval to use in my webinar on um, job application systems and how to uh, use them effectively. In the middle, we, say, we see that it says, you need to send an email and they want two things. So I constructed an email to show you it would go directly to them. There are two attachments. Note how I've labeled it with my name and with the position title, or in the other case, it's the cover letter. So it's very clear when they go to look at them or save them on their hard drive or to the cloud, they'll know what it's for. But also note above in the red box, you'll see that they've given you some information on compensation and benefits. And on the far right, they ask you for a, a, um, to send an email. Oh, great, I get to send a cover letter and resume directly. And then they tell you a little about benefits. And so I showed you how you were going to do the same as you did in the middle with sending this. But wait, there's more. If we go to the far right first, suddenly we, say, we see as we've scrolled down, oh, now they want me to fill in some um, text boxes, which usually is an indication of it going into a database, which is the applicant tracking system. And that's what the apply button looks like it's going to. So let's go back to the left now and take a note of these colors because you're gonna see them again. This is um, applying for the Associate Vice President uh, of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. When I clicked on the link to apply, it didn't take me to the direct job. And I don't know why this ADP system doesn't do that. It took me to something that listed jobs in uh, Georgia and I'm not anywhere near Georgia. So I scrolled down and hit the apply button. And the first thing I get at the bottom left, you can see I get, um, they want me to put my name, address and email in. They're not requiring me to register yet, which is good news. At least they're, they want to track who's applying for it or interested in it. And then it looks like it pushes me into the applicant tracking system. So now we're on the far right, the program manager job. And that apply here pushed me into the same colors ADP system. You can see the URL at the top. And that, again, was a problem identifying the job. It didn't come up even when I typed the full um, text in the search box, as you can see in the bottom right. So I had to go back to um, the Latin America DC, uh, Youth Center DC um, website find their careers page. On their careers page, there's a lot of benefits information. 
and then I find the link to get to the actual application. But unusual to most job postings is what's in the yellow uh, at the in the middle um, box at the bottom where it says, if you need more information, please contact us here. And it gives an actual email and the name of the department that you could write to for more information. So that's great news. So now that we've covered all of this, let's go over again. Why is reading a job posting so important and how does it help you? Well, obviously it helps you tailor your cover letter, not just your resume. It also helps you research the present job holder or someone who's had it in the past. And you can sometimes determine if this is a totally new position, especially if they haven't said it. It helps you research the company, what's said in the job posting and what's not. Because when you go to, when you look at the job posting and read it, and then go to the job, the company's website and reviews that are different places on Glassdoor and Indeed, for example, you will find more information about the culture, the way in which the company works. How big is it? Is, are the reviews consistent with what's generally being put out there about the company? And it helps you prepare and deliver in an interview to understand completely in what they've shared with you in the job posting, how the job's going to work, where it fits in, and what some of the key things they're looking for that you bring are, which again, you tailor in your resume and specify in your, your cover letter the achievements you have relative to those. As importantly, it provides information on the changing work environment. Uh, every year I'm surprised at how job posting styles and information are changing. But if you've seen any another tip from me, and if you haven't, please go watch it, you need to always be looking. So don't turn off your job alerts once you get a job because you wanna know what's going on in the environment. And I go through that in more detail. So here are some references that I find really helpful. Uh, CareerSherpa.net, uh, TheBalancedCareers.com, those are two I go to a lot, along with TheMuse.com for information on careers. And the other two are additional information from websites that had information um, similar to and expanding on information I've presented here. As always, thanks for being interested in Mentor Time's topic of the weeks and our other uh, topics and tips. Happy to connect with you on LinkedIn. Please seek me out and tell me you watched one of my webinars. And let me know if you have topics you want to hear more about or if you need more information on this topic or anything else. Thank you very much and goodbye.